so this marriage language language trend is happening on TikTok where couples are showing their spouse pictures of things and then asking them what they call it in their relationship. Yep. And until I started watching these videos, I genuinely thought we were the weirdest couple ever. <laughs> we are not weird at all. Or, or we're just very it, tame. Or normal. We're very tame compared to like the way some people speak. Yeah. I always thought like, it, how embarrassing would it be if anyone ever heard? Right, right. Everyone has their little use. playful language with each other. Yeah. And we know that we have a way that we speak to each other, but I'm also like, oh my God, I'm so glad that we are not on reality TV or but something. No one and people, will ever like, know about this. So now people are going to know about this. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Kapower Hour. I'm Lauren Powell. And I'm Sean Casey. And we are the, the Kapows. Kapow. Kapow. Is that a little baby one? Yeah. <gasps> you almost said her name. She must not be named. That's close. Good thing you're going you're gonna to cut it just as soon yeah. as I like say the first thing. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking we should have a competition and just give the same clues that we gave some of our friends. Oh, to see if anyone guesses it? Yeah. Okay, the clues are for baby girl's name. Um, it's Irish. Let's start there. Okay. You get a new clue each week. How about that? <laughs> the name is Irish. The name is Irish. I mean, her name is not Irish. That would be a cool name. Yeah. Irish Casey. Or Ireland. But um, it has Irish origins. Okay. Okay. What happened this week? We went to the Padres game. Oh, yeah. We went to the Padres game for our eight-year anniversary. <laughs> It might seem a little strange that I agreed to go to a sporting event for my anniversary. Yeah. But we, you know, we went to the winery where we got married the day before. So I got to do that. Did some of the mushy romantic stuff yeah. at dinner together. Cook, cooked me dinner. Yeah. This was an opportunity, like two of our friends who we never get to see because they have two kids. Um, we hadn't seen them in months and they invited us to go because they're Phillies fans. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like exactly what I want to do. And I was shocked. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, we can go to dinner anytime yeah. on any night of the week. It doesn't yeah. have to specifically be our anniversary. I wanted to get, if our friends are getting a babysitter, hell yeah. I want to go take advantage hell of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It was good I to was see excited. Them. When Mark texted me, I was like, well, it's our eight year anniversary. <laughs> uh, so probably not, but I will ask Lauren <laughs> like in a shocking turn of events. Yeah. <laughs> She said yes. But then you had all these little tricks up your sleeve. Yeah. I thought, I well, since since you're going to a baseball game on your anniversary, <laughs> um, let's see what we can do. So you had previously worked with the Padres PR team um, for the Harry Potter night. Yeah. A friend of ours who works for Callaway Golf is friendly with the Padres PR team. He's He also works in PR. And so he like hooked me up with the contact over there for Harry Potter night where they gave out like all the different Harry Potter hats, ba like Padres hats based on your house. So I really want to go to that game. Yeah. So that was like a good introduction to the Padres PR team. Yep. And so I hacked into your work email. <laughs> we, we have shared passwords. So I, I, uh, Oh, you did it from your computer. You were, yeah, I was I like, even, when did you go to my yeah, office? No, I just did it from mine. And, uh, Guys, that's trust. Yeah. He knows all my passwords. So I went in there and I found the contact and I shot her a quick email and I said, hey, you know, we're, we're coming to the game. Um, you know, it's our eight year anniversary. If there's anything you guys can do just to help Lauren celebrate, I think that'd be awesome. She had such a great time last time she was here. Aww. You guys, you know, do a great job. And yeah. so this was like at 2 p.m. The game was at 640. Oh my gosh. Or well, I, had, I had emailed her at like nine in the morning, but she didn't get back to me like till wow. two. So she like was like rushing scrambling. to pull all these so things she's off like, Where for are your you? seats? You know, what do you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then like, I can't remember, like four or 4.30 p.m., I get a text. She's like, all right, be ready. There's going to be a message on the screen. Just make sure you can view the right field screen. Okay. And I was like, but we're sitting in right field. <laughs> oh, no. And so I was like, are, do you mean be sitting in our right field seat so we view the, the screen by home plate? And she's like, no. Where we do the oh, shout outs. No, it's right where our, our seats literally were. Literally right where our seats were. That's hilarious. So luckily it worked <laughs> out. We got there and you're like, Mama hungry. Well, yeah, that's a it worked out in such a weird way that you this could have I am such a particular person when we get to events. Like I don't I don't wanna sit down immediately. I wanna eat. So had you been like, we need to sit in our seats. I would have been like, no, I yeah. need a taco. What are you talking about? Why am I, I going to need a taco? Why do I want to sit in my seat for the first inning? Like, thankfully, it, it, it really opposite. worked yeah. out because yeah. you would have had to be like, Lauren, 
you're going to miss something if you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm really, I'm so particular and annoying. Particular is a nice way to put it <laughs> that like, it's hard to surprise me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yes, because so, if, if, if anything deviates from the plan. Right. If I'm like, why? Why would you do? Why would we not go get food first? Or right. if, you know, I wasn't pregnant, it would be like, why? Why would we not go get a drink first? Right. So we're sitting there eating tacos. I was like, OK, should we go back up to our seats? Because we ate them like out in the concourse because I didn't want to wait to get back to my seat <laughs> to eat, which worked out also because yeah. I could have been like, let's go sit down and eat these. But I was like, let's just eat them right it's, here. <laughs> we're hungry. hungry. Yeah. Uh, and so you were like, well, we can't. Well, first you were like, let's go walk this way. I was like, okay, whatever. I really don't, I'm not in a hurry to get back to the seats. Like I love Petco Park. It's such a fun stadium to just walk around in. Then you were like, we can't go back to our seats till the end of the second inning. Okay, whatever. I didn't, I didn't pry. And then you were like running because I well, guess there was the a, inning. Yeah, the inning ended really sudden, rapidly. There was a double play. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. So all of a sudden the inning ended. So many double plays that game. Yeah. Uh, you, we just like totally kind of had to bypass probably. So we went down the lower level where I think usually they like check your ticket before they let you down yeah, there. It was still like, you know, in between innings. So they weren't checking yet. Oh, that's why they let us kind of go stand on the yeah. stairs down there. So when we get down there, but like we have two drinks, yeah. one is for another friend. Yeah. I am like, I can't hold this drink in public. <laughs> I'm very visibly pregnant. <laughs> if I hold this margarita, like I'm going to get judged. So I was like, Sean, you have to hold both of these drinks. And then you're like running down the stairs and then you're trying to get your phone out to like film my reaction. But, and so you're like putting the drinks on the stairs. There's people like coming and going. I could see the like stress in your face. Yeah. Well, because once they start playing the messages, it's like two seconds yeah. of message. And so get down there and people are staring at us. People are trying to get by. <laughs> yeah. So we finally get in a position and then we wait for like two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> there were like several messages. There's like 15 messages and we so were. So at this point I knew, I knew we were looking yeah. for a message, but yeah. that's okay. And it was and like the Padres. Welcome Lauren and Sean yeah. on my eighth anniversary. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. But then I got a text from the pod squad and they're like, oh, we just came to your seats. You weren't there. And I'm like, oh, we were looking at our message. I didn't know. I didn't Uh, know. Yeah. So the pod squad is like their street team. Yeah. Right. It's like this group. It's like the spirit squad. They kind of walk around the stadium. They throw T-shirts out. They're usually with the mascot. So I got a text from someone on their team. I don't know who it was um, that we just missed them. And they're like, okay, but you need to be there at this time. And I was like, okay, you know, stay at our seats. And like the cameraman just sort of like <laughs> saunters into our aisle. Well, he's like standing at the end of the aisle because we're in the middle section yeah. of of a row. And so there's this camera guy like standing on the stairs, kind of pe- peeking in, like waiting to get our attention. And then he had to like, thankfully, there was a seat next to us that was open. So he like walked his way in front of, but it, thankfully everyone's like, oh, there's a camera. Like, yeah, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> and so he came and sat in the open seat and just sat there and didn't, didn't like tell us what was going on and, and was waiting. looking at me and I'm like, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah. And he I wasn't was like, aware of what they were going to do. Yeah. So then he just put the camera on us. We waved and I rubbed the belly. We, so that was the jumbotron on the jumbotron. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I don't think I've ever been on Jumbotron before. Yeah. I have from making um, funny signs at Carolina yeah. basketball games. It's a whole nother story. The story for another day. Yeah, so it's it's awkward. You know, when they pan to different fans on a Jumbotron, usually the fans are like doing something crazy or doing something silly. And then the camera, then they, they notice that they got yeah. the camera's attention. And they can see themselves. And they can see themselves and they're like, whoa. Ours was like, we knew he cued us. He was like, you're, you're going to be on in two seconds. And we knew it was there. So it wasn't like we were standing up being silly. We were sitting in our seats Yeah. and then you couldn't see the and screen. Also, but yeah, he I was could. blocking the screen entirely. So I'm yeah. like, I don't know if we're still being filmed yeah, or not. So Are we on camera right now? I have no idea. You start waving and you're waving right in front of my face. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, you can barely see me, which doesn't matter. And then, uh, then you rub my belly. Like it's a little lamp and you're getting, yeah. you're going to get three wishes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It was cute. I got a bunch of messages from people that were like, oh, when I saw you on the screen, I was at that game and I, I screamed. I was like, that's the salt spread. And everybody <laughs> thought I was crazy. <laughs> that's awesome. That was pretty cute. Yeah. And, and that wasn't even all. And then in the seventh inning stretch, the pod squad came back with the Padres mascot, the Friar, and we got to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Yeah, it was the seventh inning stretch. Yeah. 
that's a song. You know how I hate the birthday song? Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's just like, I hate the birthday song. It's so slow. Everyone's out of tune, out of key. Take Me Out to the Ball Game is, is right up there. And I'm like, oh. so I'm I'm swinging with the friar and we're singing. He's not because he's, you know, in a costume, big old, <laughs> big old head. But I'm like, all right. I probably should mouth the words. But just you weren't so I, actually singing? Well, yeah. Because I was like, I need to mouth the words to show that I actually know what this song is. <laughs> um, but I wasn't singing because I just, it makes me uncomfortable to sing. So fun fact, my grandpa, Ken Casey, um, used to sing the national anthem and the seven inning stretch at the Tigers games. Oh, he sang the seventh inning stretch song too? Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe he can teach me how yeah. to sing it. <laughs> yeah. Make me not uncomfortable. <laughs> they went all out for us it was yeah. really really awesome really it made sweet. me look really good yeah <laughs> and then the Padres freaking won yeah it's a great uh, night it was a great night i I'm, couldn't couldn't imagine what we just went to dinner <laughs> yeah this was way oh, better talked about our feelings gross yeah that was awesome that's a very memorable anniversary yep um speaking of sporting events you had a lot of events last week i had a really fun week yeah so the detroit lions are my team in the nfl yeah, I mean that that that's appropriate. It not for the story, but just for like the lions. Mm-hmm. What do they call? What do you guys call the f- lions free? Lions free. Yeah. Why? What? What does that mean? Why? Lions why was- free. People in Detroit because the lions have been so bad for so long. They go lions free, and that means they just there's no more lions in their life. They don't watch. They don't read. They don't do anything. The lions are dead to them. Your dad is lions free. Uh, he was for a little while, and then he like I asked him this morning, or I asked him the morning of the game. Hey, are you back? Are you, are you lions free? And he said, ask me after the game tonight. Yeah, okay. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> I am not lions free. I have never gone lions free. When yeah, people were going you... lions free, I was going, I don't know what the opposite of that is. You but were paying. Yeah, I'm always all in on the lions. Last year, Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Yep. And one of your childhood friends, right? Someone you grew up. Yep. One of your neighborhood childhood friends lives in Kansas City and the Lions just so happened to be playing the Chiefs as like the season opener, right? Yep. You asked me a few months ago, you were like, hey, you were so excited. Like I was going to say yes. You were like, do you want to go watch Lions play Chiefs two months before my due date? That's the last thing I want to do is be in a stadium. And I was like, Molly's also pregnant, my friend Matt's wife. And you were like, no. Yeah. Like, that's the last thing I want to do, but you said I should go. I don't think I did. I don't no. think I said you should go. I th- honestly thought by me not going that you would be like, I guess we're not going. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out I was wrong. Very, very wrong. Yeah. Just Kansas City is such a bucket list game. I mean, one, they just won the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Their stadium's amazing. Their tailgate is amazing. So I, you went, you flew, I flew out mon- uh, Thursday morning. Day of the game. You wore your jersey on the plane. I wore, can I give a quick uh, side note about my jersey? Oh, sure. So the Lions drafted a quarterback out of Tennessee called Hendon Hooker. And Speaking of amazing quarterback Yeah, games. right? Oh, man, he was destined to be a quarterback. <laughs> I immediately bought uh, Hendon Hooker jersey, and he is our third string quarterback. <laughs> so you just you have a jersey that just says Hooker on it. Yeah, I tagged him on Instagram uh, with my photo of my brother and I. You posted a story. I posted a story and I tagged him in it, and he replied like almost immediately with fire. And I was like, Oh yeah, probably not too many people <laughs> with a Hendon Hooker jersey oh, really? yet. Yeah. Oh, the way you talk about him, I thought he was like wildly popular. I thought he's he was wildly like, popular with me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought he was like Patrick Mahomes level. No. No, he was really, really good at Tennessee, and then he tore his ACL. So then that also made it so the Lions could draft him because he probably was going to be a top first okay, round pick. Okay, this isn't a sports podcast. Carry on. But it's such move, a good move story. Move along. Okay, so he replied to your DMs. What did he yeah. say? Yeah, he said, thanks for the support. He loves being in Detroit. I, can't, I said, oh, I come from a family of quarterbacks. You know, we, we all re- love Aww. your game. And he's like, oh, I think my mom would be a quarterback if, if you know, she she played football. And I'm like, same. My Literally, mom is the, yes, your mom exact same. would definitely be a quarterback so if we she were, could be. So we were like vibing, having fun. And I'd, I'd had like a drink or two on the airplane. And so I was like, oh, we're best friends. We can just like talk. Yeah. And then I was like, so how's rehab going? Because he's still recovering from his torn ACL. And then it was just like crickets and nothing. And I'm like, oh, I think I, I think I came on a little too. <laughs> too, too hot. But Coming in too hot. Baby girl's kicking. She wants us to move on. Or she's just already a Lions fan and is really excited. And their dad got to have this lifetime opportunity. It's tough to tell. Let's move on. Okay. So this whole like marriage language thing was trending this week. Yeah. So this marriage language language trend, 
is happening on TikTok where couples are showing their spouse pictures of things and then asking them what they call it in their relationship. Yep. They'd be like, it's a picture of a latte. What do we call this? And then the husband would be like, oh, that's a live, laugh, latte. Live, <laughs> laugh, latte. And they'd be like, what do we call these um, breaded chicken things? And he'd be like, chicken nuggies. <laughs> and it's like, okay, what do we do if we're, if we're sleeping? Taking a nappies. <laughs> and these are just like adults, right? Yeah. I mean, but it's hilarious. It's so cute. Yeah. It's adorable. I could yeah. not stop watching these videos. Everyone that got served, I was like, I need to know what their marriage language is. Yeah. I need to know what else they are saying. Well, and it's just funny that like calling attention to a marriage language yeah. at all. Okay. So what do we call, what do we call the, when we go to Starbucks and you don't know what to order. And so you're just like, give me this. Give me a skinny white girl. <laughs> and, and what is a skinny white girl? Do you even know? Uh, it's it's a lot. Uh, I've I've because I've tried to order it myself several went, times, and I like did I you panic. Ask, did you go to Starbucks and ask for a skinny no, white girl? Once? No, I okay. didn't. I, I know it's not called a skinny white girl, but like I can never remember. So it's like a it's tall, just, skinny vanilla latte with sugar free and skim milk. You don't but, have to say any of that because yeah. when you say skinny, that means. Non-fat and sugar-free. Yeah. Yeah. But like in my head, I say skinny panic, white girl. Yeah. And like, I just yeah. can't like, okay, what are the other so things? Skinny white girl is just a non-fat. It's just a skinny vanilla latte, which is yeah. a vanilla latte with, with skim milk and sugar-free vanilla. Yeah. And you call it the skinny white girl. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you say when you're just like really tired and you want to go to bed? Oh, I want to, uh, time to go sleepy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Like th this is like, we'll be watching TV and I'll look over and she's like basically asleep. And I'm like, Lauren, are you awake? In the original time, you're just like sleepy. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you were, I remember you were like, well, if that's sleepy, bye bye, then what do we do in the morning? And I was like, wakey, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that one even more. So then we started doing, yeah. uh, okay. Where are you going when you're going to bed? Yeah, so we're going to Bye Bye Bar, which <laughs> sometimes you need a reservation. Yeah, for Bye Bye Bar, sometimes it's. But full. the story there is we're in London Heathrow Airport, and there's a bar, and it's called Bye Bye Bar. Is that where? The, well, that's why we started saying that. Yeah, you uh, don't remember that? Because it was like, oh, that's like Sleepy Bye Bye. Yeah. We're going to the Bye Bye Bar. Exactly. <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, that's why it's so perfect because we saw the bar in London. <laughs> yes, we're going yeah. to Bye Bye Bar. <laughs> Make like, a reservation. So if, so if we're watching TV and I'm getting a little sleepy, you're like. Like you're like, oh, does somebody need to check into the to the sleepy to bye bye bar? Do you need a reservation at bye I'm bye like, bar? I'm like, order me an appetizer. <laughs> I'll be there in five. And then okay, of, and then of course we just have like so Stuff many the dog. about the dog, which I think is even maybe more common than dog language. Yeah. It's so if he's just, if he's all stretched out on the couch, what is he doing? Oh, he's doing a long boy. He's doing a long boy. Sometimes a heckin' long boy. Yeah. Because he's, he's tall. We measured him, actually. He's so long. <laughs> when he stretches out both his arms and his legs, he is over five feet long. Yeah. He's a long boy. Oh, what do I wake up and say <laughs> first thing in the morning? Every day without fail, you turn look and you go, hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah. If, if, I, if you don't say it, I look at it and I'm like, hungry. And you're like, yeah. hungry. Yeah, hungry. I'm very hungry when I wake Immediately. up. Immediately. So why do we say this one where you're like, uh, when I want you or you want me to kiss your forehead? Yeah, K my F. Where did that start? I have no idea. Why do we start? So you'd be like, K my F. Yeah. I yeah. don't know how that started. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't remember. Yeah, marriage language is really funny. Okay, speaking of words that cannot be real, uh, I had someone message me a, a list of Australian slang to see if we knew oh, any. Oh, after last week? Of yes. The, so arr, arr. After we did the thing about the koozies yeah. in Australia being called stubby holders. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. I haven't seen this list. So this is from Riley. Okay. Okay. So you're going to love this. God bless Australia. Okay. So um, when you are, when you want to say hurry up or when someone says something obvious about the task you are doing, you say, we are not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> what? We're not here to fuck spiders. Hurry up. Wow. Or, yeah. Uh, just, okay. Isn't that amazing? Oh. None of this slang makes sense. Okay. That's what makes it so good. Yeah. Okay. And then um, if you want to say a long time, you say yonks. Yonks. So like in a sentence, it would be, haven't seen you for yonks. <laughs> What? I don't know. Haven't seen you for yonks. It's okay. a good one. Very drunk. 
Munted. Have you I'm heard that? munted. No, but I love that. Munted. I'm munted. There, oh man, I feel like the the Commonwealth like countries are just so good at coming up with words for drunk. Just, yeah, really yeah. good, quirky. Yeah. Um. Okay, this is another word for weed whacker. Whipper snipper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's good. Is that also a term for circumcision? Whipper snipper? Oh, God. Just give your whipper a snipper. Okay, this one is a little gross, but I still think it's funny. Uh, the poo you have after a night of heavy drinking. It's got a grog bog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just left a grog bog. Yeah. Okay, to have a look at something? A squiz. A, squ- <laughs> a squiz. Have a squiz at this. <laughs> I love that she gave me... Uh, Sentences, yeah, to yeah, use, it use in. in sentences. Have a squiz at this. Have a squiz uh, at this. Wow. And then this one, it means no worries, no walkers, <laughs> no walkers, no walkers. How are you? How are you spelling that? W U C K E R S. No walkers. No walkers. It mm. means no walkers. Huh. Oh man, this should be Keep a new. Coming. Yeah, this should be a new segment. Just we're just like we have this weird like obsession with Australia on our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I mean, I. I could go to Canada. I could go to the South. I could, I could, I'm just, I want to hear all the languages. Yeah. I yeah. love what different people call different things. Actually, there was this, another TikTok that went viral of this girl. She was asking a bunch of different people what it, what they call, her point was in Orange County, for some reason, it's the only place in America that people call this particular action a birdie. So when you, if you were to like tip a water bottle back and not put it on your mouth and you were trying to get the water into your mouth without touching the lip, the mm-hmm. mouthpiece, what would you call it? I have no idea. Well, I, I didn't I have a word. I, I didn't have, no have a word, word for, that. for that. Some people, a lot of people called it waterfall, Oh, but then it was like, where are you from? And everyone who said waterfall, they were just from different regions. Every single person who called it a birdie was from Orange County. Huh. Cause That's they're so doing weird. like a baby bird. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It makes sense. Yeah. But I didn't have a word for that. No, definitely not. What else did we do this week? Oh, so I finally looked into whether or not non-alcoholic pumpkin beers exist. And what's the answer? Well, so I Googled it thinking, no way. No way. Not my chair. Not my problem. Uh, <laughs> nice. Leave me to the bathroom, Mr. <laughs> Walkway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Where was I going with that? <laughs> yeah, so I Googled you know, do NA pumpkin beers exist? It was both fruitful and sad. So there was one that was released last year. We don't know if it's getting released this year. So currently can't get it. Uh, Athletic Brewing, which they make a ton of NA beers. Yeah. They have an Oktoberfest, not a pumpkin beer, but an Oktoberfest. And then something called Dark and Gordy, but it sold out. So I couldn't get that, but I did manage to get the Oktoberfest one. And then there was this one that sounds so delicious. It's in Canada. So I had it like in my shopping cart uh, and I put my zip code in and it's like, would not accept it. And then I realized they only shipped to Canada. Yeah. So I, oh, so far I've only been able to get my hands on an Oktoberfest. And then I remembered, you know, years ago when, before any of the hard seltzers got in the like seasonal game, Remember White Claw Pure, which is the flavorless White Claw. Yeah. It's not good. Okay. <laughs> it is disgusting. Um, But I bought it and I bought pumpkin liqueur and I tried to make my own pumpkin spice hard seltzer. Also not good. <laughs> <laughs> disgusting. So, so is that inspiring you to try and make your own pumpkin yeah. NA beer? But like, is there a base beer NA beer that you can just add pumpkin to? <laughs> Maybe the Oktoberfest because it's like... Oh, uh, yeah spicy oh, yeah. and okay. then i just have to find like pumpkin syrup or something to put in it interesting do some experimenting so what inspired this was because last weekend we went into total wine just to see just <laughs> to see as i like to do and they had all their this was labor day weekend they had all of their pumpkin beers out and i was like respect total wine gets it fall starts august 1st we're doing it so i was like i you know three years ago i ranked every pumpkin beer i could get my hands on So even if I could drink right now, ranking them again wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. Because I've already done it. So it was like, all right, let's let's have you do it. You know, at the beginning. Let's have Sean do it and see how wrong he is. Yeah. Well, at the beginning of my pregnancy, you know, when we announced when we announced that I was pregnant, we kind of made this joke video that was like Sean's gonna take over being a (laughs) Seltzbert. People thought we were serious. I know. It's like we just don't really have time for that. Turns out Sean has a full time job. job. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um but I was like, okay, now's your opportunity to be a pump spurt. 
Yeah. So we got 16 different pumpkin spice beers. And then I surprised you <laughs> with one additional pumpkin spice beer from Bush Light, who, can I just say, Bush Light has made a stink, has made a fuss every year. Every fall, they're like, we're, we're, we're not making pumpkin spice. We just make one beer. It's called beer. And then every April Fool's Day, they're like, look, we made a pumpkin spice beer. Just kidding. We would never. <laughs> And then what they go and do this year, they're just like taunting me. They did make a pumpkin spice beer for, for dogs. dogs. <laughs> I feel so trolled by Bushlight. <sighs> anyway, we bought it. <laughs> and we bought it and I drank it. Yeah. So you tried 17 pumpkin yeah. spice beers. Yeah. 16 of which were for humans and one was not. Can I just say it's really hard to taste things and come up with clever things to say. Oh, tell yeah. me more. Yeah, you're really good at it. And I feel like I let you down when I'm on there because you're like, what do you think? Just say something funny. And I'm like, I don't know. I, th I'm not I'm not good at this. <laughs> Aw, you didn't let me down. No, I just like, it's really hard. And it so like, I think you do a really good job of that because it's like, I'm just trying to think of what it tastes like. And you're saying what it tastes like and making a joke and being clever at the same time. And like, I could do that if you gave me a script to say so. Like off camera, I'm like, hey, what, what should I say? Give me something funny. You're like, give me a pun. <laughs> I think I also like when I'm, when I drink on camera, I can like get to that point, but I'm just having a little sip. So I'm like, I wasn't drunk at all during the video. I'm like, Well, what? tasting is different than just like drinking and breathalyzing. Those videos are so different because in the tasting, it's like, how do you describe this? How do you describe or react to this flavor in a way that's true to you? So if people understand your palate and know your taste buds, then they know, oh, if Lauren likes it, I may like it. Or if Lauren hates it, I may like it. Um, and then also try to be a little, I try to be, for the most part, unless it's disgusting, I try to say like, oh, if you like this type of thing, mm -hmm. you would probably like this because mm -hmm. everyone's palates are different. Yep. So the tasting videos, it's harder to be funny because you're trying to informational yeah and then also for me it was really hard because we ranked 16 of them i'm like <laughs> i can't remember what i ranked all the other ones and i'm like i don't know if i like this better or worse than yeah. like the first one so so at the end we breathalyzed you and you were only a 0.02 when yeah. i did it i was like a 0.08 and i realized yeah you didn't go back that's the thing is don't be afraid to go so every time i would like every time i find one that i like more than a previous one or or like just as much i will have to sip them back and forth and and then and then rearrange so so if you rated something a six and then you taste another thing and you're like, I, I, that might be a five. It might be a seven. Let me taste that six again to really figure out where it belongs. So but I, I was sitting next to you. Why didn't you just tell me this? We I told the video? you. No, I did. I told you that you could. I don't. I feel like you didn't. So anyway, point being, you get tipsier when yeah, I only you, tasted each one. I tasted a few taste, of them twice. But yeah. But yeah, yeah usually I, I, I taste everything like three or four times. I was 0.02 after I chugged the a chalice. Master, too. So like, yeah, massive one. I, I didn't. Yeah. So you're really good at it. Thanks. It's harder for me to do. I'm not as natural. And it's funny because your, your results are vastly different yeah. than mine. Yeah. So you really liked all the stronger, higher ABV beers. Darker beers. Darker. Yeah. yeah. Which is like, it's there's just so many different types of people that like so many different things. So like if you're a basic bitch, <laughs> you're probably, although you, we agreed on like yeah, there your were number several one, on yeah. I think was my number one as well. No, my number two is your number one. But you had so many other ones ranked higher that were just so strong, mm -hmm. um, thick beers. That's a good segue for this. Speaking of drinking like we're in college, <laughs> how about that? Sure. So last week on the podcast, we talked about how UNC sent me uh, or sent baby girl a bunch of baby clothes. And I posted that video this past week. And then like a bunch of people tagged the like Michigan State bookstore yeah. <laughs> in the video that was like, where are you at? Where are you at, Michigan State? And then I personally tagged them. I was like, hey, we're getting steamrolled by UNC <laughs> out here. So then they messaged me and were like, hey, send us your address. So. Yeah. So we got even more sports baby clothes <laughs> coming. People in the video were like, I want to see Sean's reaction to these, to, to all these UNC baby clothes. And so I think you should be the one to unbox the Michigan State one and react. Okay. And then that also gave me an idea. Oh. That like, you know how I like to do different clothing hauls for myself that's like, help me pick a dress for the wedding, mm -hmm. help me pick a baby shower outfit, whatever. So I, now I, I, I spent some time, you know how I don't sleep well. 
Uh, when I'm not sleeping well, I shop online. <laughs> and so I uh, spent some time buying some categorized baby clothes to have you react. So we're going to do a clothing haul and you're going to react to the... Oh. So I got a lot of stuff. It's so cute. It's so fun. But we're going to return all of it. No, right? we need it. It's an investment. <laughs> she needs clothes. I still don't understand sizing, so might need to exchange for bigger or smaller. I don't really don't understand sizing. Never will. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, so I, the other day I got a strike on TikTok. And so you you said that to me, and I was like, oh, man, a strike. That sounds terrible. It is. It's bad. And, but you I'm get just shadow like, banned. But I'm just like, I actually don't know what a strike oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to explain what a strike okay. is because, like, I, I was like, I mean, it sounds bad, obviously. If you but- get a strike on any of the social media platforms, it you only get, like, Two or three before you get either suspended, your account gets suspended or taken down, or you lose access to certain features, monetization. They usually shadow ban you. They'll never admit that. And what's shadow banning? Shadow banning is where your comments don't get seen. Your videos don't get seen. They won't ever tell you that you're shadow banned. You'll just suddenly see a huge decline in exposure and if you ever wonder why, it's because you did something that made them mad and they shadow banned you. That just seems so passive aggressive. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Yeah. It's like, like you did something bad, but we're not going to tell you what it is and therefore you're punished, but yeah. you might not know. So this girl, so I made a video talking about the Starbucks fall menu and loved the like uh, iced pumpkin chai drink, whatever it was. And so this girl stitched me, made a reaction. She went out and got it and she tasted it. And she was like, that is the most basic bitch thing I will drink today. It's amazing. And so I commented, laughy face, basic bitch approved. Not even thinking that that was like a cuss word or like. Strike worthy. Well, yeah, that like it's derogatory. Like it's a bad word and, and TikTok's trying to cut down on bullying. And so then like 10 minutes later, I get this message. That's like, you have a strike on your account. Your comment has been removed. Read the guidelines. How dare you? Like we're trying to keep <laughs> you need to reevaluate safe. your life decisions. Yeah. And I'm such a like honest rule follower that when I got the strike, it had the option to appeal. And I was like, well, no, I did swear. I did say the B word. I shouldn't appeal this. I did a no, no. I'm, so, I'm a bad child. I'm a bad. Yeah. And then I was like, well, let's just appeal and see what happens. Thinking that I had no chance. Cause I was like, I wasn't being mean, you know, yeah. it's a term of endearment. Right. Um, and so I appealed it and it just immediately got reinstated. The strike got removed. Huh. Yeah. So what's, what's the point of this thing? If it's just going to like, let it go back to normal. What's the point of the strike? Yeah, what's what's the point of this? I mean, do you think it was someone actually reviewed it or are they like, oh, if you appeal it, we're just going to let it go? I don't know. I think someone probably, if someone did review it, they probably looked at the context, saw a laugh emoji, saw the word basic in front of bitch, and they were like, oh, this isn't a, she's not bullying anyone. Like, like, that's the sales part. I love her. <laughs> yeah, what's the opposite of shadow ban? Can I yeah. get like sun, <laughs> sun promoted or something? Um. Uh, anyway, speaking of TikTok... Somebody tagged me in this video. So the username is Blaine's Declassified. And in the video, he says, Welcome to Bolivia, where you can casually buy a four loco frappuccino (laughs) at the local food court bakery. What? So they're literally just like blending four loco into like milkshakes and then handing them out at like the mall. We're going to Bolivia after yeah. the baby's born. I think we should book a flight. <laughs> and I and over there they might have the like the original. The, yeah, the the secret yeah. sauce. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I got another comment from somebody. We did this video a year ago where we had these like it was like a couple's punishment quiz challenge. We had to ask each other questions and if the other person got it wrong they had a specific punishment tailored to like things they hate yeah and so one of mine was ranch and i cried (laughs) when you tried to make me eat a spoonful of it and one of yours was your punishment was um chewing on a toothbrush because you hate other people chewing on a toothbrush yeah that creeps me out so kevin mentioned those two things and he was like one uh, topic suggestion that would be really good would be unique fears other than those two things well i just love that he called my yeah that my callback my issue with ranch a unique fear <laughs> <laughs> you're not wrong yeah do you have any other unique fears other than other people chewing on toothbrushes in front of you i have an irrational fear of getting my chin caught in a zipper when i'm zipping up a jacket huh 
and to found out that my mom, when I was young, had, you know, went to zip up the jacket and my, I like put my head down and like caught my chin and like was bleeding a little bit. Aww. And like still today as an adult, when I'm zipping up my jacket, I'm just like, I put my head way back and like <laughs> zip and make sure that it doesn't touch my chin. And that sounds like a rational fear. Uh, yeah. Well, it's just, it's a little scary about like, <laughs> you know, we're about to bring Trauma, a baby in the world. Yeah. And, like the things that you do that, you, you know, accidental, forget. like, and you know. I'm 40 years old and she said it was like when I was two. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, but I still am very hesitant around zippers in my my chin. That's fair. I don't think that's weird. I used to have, this one's pretty irrational. I don't anymore. I've grown, but I used to hate foods that were soft to the touch, but they crunched when you bit into them. So like peppers on pizza or like onions on pizza I hate it because they're soft the texture is soft and then you bite in just kidding it's crunchy <laughs> I was like I don't trust these vegetables what are they trying to hide so do you hate vegetables I did as a kid <laughs> I hated vegetables wow huh. yeah I've gotten over it yeah but it was like a weird texture surprise interesting Oh, this girl on TikTok, though, not to make it all about TikTok. I spent a lot of time on TikTok. Um, the sound of styrofoam rubbing together, like, makes her gag. Like, she was physically gagging, opening her own takeout container. <laughs> like, it's an actual styrofoam wow. phobia. There's a lot of, like, weird stuff out there. Yeah. yeah. Like, how um, do you develop that? Somebody zips your chin in a styrofoam <laughs> container when you're four. Okay, so, so we have a new segment this week. Woo! It's called... What made me cry? <laughs> what made me cry this week? What well, made Lauren cry? Yesterday morning, I woke up. So I don't sleep well right now in the third trimester. I'm not sleeping well. It's really uncomfortable. I wake up in pain and then I can't go back to sleep. And so yesterday I woke up and I just was like, all right, I guess I'm just going to get up and start eating breakfast because that's what I do. I get out of bed and I immediately have a bagel. That's what I do. And so I go to make my bagel and Sean's still sleeping, right? Because he sleeps great because he's not pregnant. <laughs> and I go to make a bagel and I don't have any cream cheese. And if Sean were awake, he would immediately jump up and be like, I'll go get you cream cheese right now. But he was asleep and I started crying because I was mad that he can sleep so well. And I didn't want to wake him up to go get cream cheese because he should just be, he should just know that I needed cream cheese while he was sleeping <laughs> and he should be awake. <laughs> so I cried. I'm sorry that I was sleeping while you needed cream cheese. Thank you. I accept your apology. I'll try and be awake next time. Thanks. <laughs> and then another thing that made me cry was when we were ranking the pumpkin beers, you, the first one you drank, you really enjoyed. And I cried because I... <laughs> really miss pumpkin beer i was like you told me to do this I, <laughs> i'm sorry you just described it so well and i just was like okay that, that's this is the first time i've missed beer this whole pregnancy mm -hmm. so we have stocked up on all the p good pumpkin beers for november you're gonna be ready yeah. still pumpkin season in november yep. so those are the two things that made me cry this week that i feel like exposing to the internet i love this new so segment yeah I think once once we've had the baby, it can be like, what made our toddler cry? <laughs> yeah. What's the difference between it? Lauren and, to and yeah. the toddler? <laughs> or she you see all those posts on Instagram. We're just like, this is why my two-year-old cried today. Right, and and it's, it's just completely irrational stuff. Right. But not having enough cream cheese is, is rational. Thank you. Yeah. It's not irrational. Okay. I didn't say it was irrational. Neither did I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for I Just Found Out. Nice. I have so many. This was a, such an informative week for me. Okay. I have so many mind-blowing I Just Found Out for you. I can't wait. Okay, I should go first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I Just Found Out. This is kind of sad. You can feel babies cry in the womb. What? So when they, every now and then I'll get this like jittery like vibration like this. And apparently that is the baby crying. What do they have to cry about? I don't know. No cream cheese? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's bad amniotic fluid. I don't know. Uh, not enough space. Mom's not sleeping well. Yeah. That's them crying. Dad you went to a football game. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> so I also just found out about the save function on Instagram. <laughs> didn't know that you could do that. You didn't know you could save? I kind of did. But and like, you can save them in folders. Yeah. Yeah. I am now. Okay. I definitely am now. Okay. I have one called baby tips. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I also have one called golf tips. Great. <laughs> one thing you're going to be doing a lot and one thing you're not going to be doing a lot yeah. very soon. 
I just found out the man who invented the Pringles can ended up being buried in a Pringles can. Like his urn? It became an urn? Or was it a human-sized Pringles can? What do you think? Did you do more research? Yeah, it just ended up being a regular Pringles can. So he's <laughs> like, an urn? Yeah, I found it on Reddit, and the top comment was like, why was I thinking that it was going to be like a <laughs> coffin a size? Coffin. Because <laughs> that was my thought, too. I'm yeah. like, oh, wow, he went all out. Well, my first it, thought was, wow, how many pieces did they have to chop his body into yeah, to fit exactly. into the can? Exactly. And then I remembered that cremation exists. Cremation exists. And what flavor do you think they chose? Sour cream and onion. <laughs> original but there was a debate amongst all the grandkids about which flavor wow <laughs> and at the funeral like he was cremated and then they like forgot at the burial that they for- they forgot this piece so they had to go to the store and there was a debate over which flavor and then they got original and they put it in there did they take the chips out <laughs> <laughs> i have questions. i hope so yeah yeah wow his name is frederick bauer great yeah okay he actually had the idea of stacking chips on top of each other and then the can as well Instead of just putting them in bags. Pretty cool. Okay. Uh, I just found out that, so you you know when you're reading Harry Potter, do you remember reading Harry Potter mm-hmm. and they would say, one of the characters would say E-R-M, mm-hmm. right? How do you pronounce, how would you read that in your head? Um, okay. And then yeah. if they pronounced E-R, how were you pronouncing that? Er. Er, right? Yeah. So it's erm. I was reading it as erm or er. Okay. In England, that's their um, and E-R-M uh, is um, erm, it's erm, but they read it as um, and then E-R is their uh. I, I actually did know that. You knew? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Er, like, I just was like, I didn't think about it. I was just like, yeah. oh yeah, in Harry Potter, they say erm, <laughs> erm, mm. and I've definitely set, started saying like, in erm. text, I'll say E-R, er, when I'm trying to think about something. Yeah, that's it's like uh? the, it's the same idea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Our nar. <laughs> that one welcome, was welcome, trippy. Welcome to the club, Lauren. Yeah, yeah. You're we now, all know you spent two years living in London when you were a baby boy. Sixth and seventh grade. Okay, whatever. Okay, this one you're going to like. Okay. I just found out that Costco Kirkland Signature, they do more revenue than Nike and McDonald's. What? They're the biggest consumer brand in the world. They do $58 billion in revenue a year. K Sig coming in hot. Kirkland Signature. Wow. And if you don't know what that is, Kirkland Signature is like Costco's name brand, right? Yeah. So like Target has whatever Target's is, Good and Gather. Walmart has. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty common Walmart in like is. the grocery space. Like everyone has the like Everyone store has brand. their store brand, right? Yeah. And so, but Kirkland Signature is like known for being better than a lot of the name brand stuff. So we opt for, if Kirkland Signature makes a version, we generally opt for it because it's good stuff and we started calling it k-sig k-sig yeah yeah so they were very cool <laughs> yeah yeah they wow bigger than nike and mcdonald's and mcdonald's how that's insane well because think of it it's not just like it's it's across every they have so many different things in their store so many yeah, different I wonder, products i wonder how many products how many different products they yeah. actually sell okay this is my last one okay i'm so excited i should have maybe ended this isn't as exciting <laughs> Do you know where pine nuts come from? No. Pine cones. <laughs> okay. Pine nuts come from pine cones. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's not that Are cool. you kidding me? Okay. Let's have a couple comments about last week's episode. So you know when we were arguing about the stroller? Yeah. So Liz says... Um, Lauren will have carried your baby for 40 weeks and regardless of delivery, there will be a recovery period. Anytime there is a 50, 50 decision, Lauren wins. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> so Liz has Liz said it. Is your new favorite person. It It is done. I actually got a message myself. Um, would you like me to read it? Hmm, I don't know. Um, this is from Terrence. Oh, wait. Yep. Recommend you push for a more convenient stroller. Honestly, after the novelty wears off, you don't even think about the Stryl stroller at all. There are stains all over it, and some of them are poop. The faster you can break it down, the better, and the convenience will matter way more over time. Just so you know, Terrence, right after we finish this podcast, I'm buying the rose gold one. <laughs> he also, you just pushed me to that. He also said, also, choose your battles. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Covered in poop. Can we not? Like, everybody loves to tell us about baby poop. I don't need to be warned about poop. Uh, okay. This was interesting. So last week we talked about koozies and the different, there's so many different terms depending on, mm-hmm. you know, I asked everybody where, I asked people where you were from and what you call it. A lot of people in Canada said the coat, they call a koozie a cozy. A lot of people said can cooler, you know, a lot of people said koozie. So this woman messaged me. She says, I live in Iowa. I collect koozies, have over a thousand, made an Instagram page dedicated to my collection. I called myself the enthusiast <laughs> amazing oh that's awesome uh i posted a koozie of the day k-o-t-d <laughs> well the word koozie is trademarked by the koozie group a company owned by bick they had my entire ig page shut down i wasn't even selling anything i only was posting my collection they said i was in violation of copyright and trademark infringement so now i have to call them can coolers but this is why you see so many variations in the usa because a lot of non koozie group companies sell them but can't call them koozies wow so they're just like out there just claiming to any trademark infringement that they can what a missed opportunity. Does does Dick not understand how social media works? Yeah. Unbelievable. So I thought that was interesting that like people have had to develop different names for it. Yeah. Because <laughs> out of necessity. Because they trademarked. Because they trademarked it before they got that. That really first. makes me hate the koozie brand way more now. Uh-huh. I'm not I'm not calling it a koozie anymore. What are you gonna call it? I don't know. A stubby holder. A coldy holdy. A coldy holdy. People spell it C O O Z I E because that's also a way around the trademark. Mm. Is it? Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Seems but like you people... would have misspellings of of your trademark. As... No, you can't own both koozie with a K and koozie with a C. That those are two completely different products. We should have a lawyer tell us that. Okay, so what are our loves of the week? Our capositives. <sighs> Do you want me to go first? Sure. My composite of the week is the city of kansas city um as we talked about earlier the whole city the whole city i had a blast everyone was super nice the downtown area is like super fun we went in like three different districts just beautiful the architecture was really unique Mm. um like i said everyone was nice they have an amazing football stadium if you're still inclined to go watch football um but otherwise i think there's a lot of other really fun things that you can do and i think it's underrated i think Mm. uh, if you're looking for a fun little chip spend a weekend in kansas city and in case you didn't know, that's in Missouri. <laughs> it's right on the Missouri and Kansas border. Also, yeah, I think yeah. there is a Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. I don't, know how, the, I don't know how the division goes, but it's, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. Okay. My positive is for as much like annoyance and grievances we had with our hospital group and um, with the previous pregnancies, I knew that you could get breast pumps covered by insurance I just assumed that it was going to be like like crappy breast pumps. basic ones. Basic, it's not anything that I actually was going to want. Just like a free, let's just, we have to give out a breast pump. Let's just give them this, right? And I also thought it was going to be a hassle to, to have to get it. Today, I got a text message from Kaiser that was like, sign up for your free electric breast pump right here. So I click on it and I go in and all the options were brands that I actually wanted and was considering buying myself. So I was super impressed that Kaiser was going to cover, they cover like, there's like two that are completely free and that, but they have like 10 different options on there. So two are completely free and the rest are like, they cover like a percentage of it depending on how expensive they are. I, but they were the the brands that I actually was going to, you know, that I had researched and wanted anyway. So yeah, that's pretty impressive. I, I was floored. Good job, Kaiser. Good job, Kaiser. That's a good positive. Yeah. Well, it's time to go because it's getting dark and our windows open and our <laughs> whole neighborhood can see all of our ring lights. <laughs> Are and people looking at us? I, I can't see, but yeah. I feel like you've been looking out the window yep. a lot tonight. They now know we do a podcast in here. Okay. Thank you guys for listening. Make sure that you follow this podcast so that you get notified when new episodes come out. Every Wednesday, we have a video portion that plays on Spotify and YouTube. And if you want to follow Kapower Hour on Instagram, that is where I'm checking for messages and comments. Yeah. And I'm also getting comments from Spotify and YouTube. So if you have any have any messages for us, we're, we're happy to have them. Send us more Australian slang. Yeah. Send us all the, all slang, the slang from Actually, anywhere. You're right. Canadian yeah. slang, Irish slang, Georgia slang. I don't care. I want to hear 
the weirdest things you call things where you live. Okay? Yeah. Give it to me. All right. Work a pout. Work a pout. Work a pout.